Next on Street Smarts, from animal lovers, what organization is also known by the acronym PETA? Taco Bell, fajita pita. What's your favorite pita? I'm the chicken kind. Do you mind killing animals? As long as I don't see it. To animal magnetism. Hugh Hefner created Playboy magazine in the 50s. What similar magazine did Bob Guccione create in the 60s? I'm um, GQ. I was a GQ. <laughs> I'm sure that you were. <laughs> Street Smarts, think you've got them? Find out now. And this is Street Smarts. Now, from Davenport, Iowa to New York City, I roam this great country of ours searching high and low for a few folks willing to show me their street savvy. Some succeed, some don't know what savvy means and show me something else. Uh, the censors won't let us show that, though. And now back here are our two in-studio contestants going to try their hand at guessing whose answers were savvy and whose answers were kind of silly. And here are our contestants. We got Adrian right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah! And how cute is Brooke right here? today with a fantastic cash prize. The other is merely going to walk away. I think we all know the more desirable option. Okay. Now, let's meet the three pupils of the pavement. First up, Heather from Minnesota tells us who she'd like to get her digs into. Heather, what do you do? I am a nanny for two and a half year old twin boys. Oh, that's very nice. What are their names? Do you want to say hi to them? Zachary and Nicholas. Hi, me. So you're the nanny. Yes, I am the nanny. If you could marry one famous person, who would it be? Oh, my goodness. Ty Diggs. Oh, oh. he's so You know, funny. you should probably know his first name. It's Tay. Is it? What's your favorite movie? Love and Basketball. I'll see. Oh, you like, you like the, uh, the movies. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't have anything there. And Kevin from Jersey explains how powerful one word can be. Kevin, where are you from? From Newark, New Jersey. Newark, New Jersey. Jersey guy. Jersey guy, yeah. man. What do you do in New Jersey? Uh, all right. Uh, police officer, actually. How long have you been a cop? Uh, nine years. Nine years? So have you been laying out by the pool? You look pretty tan. Yeah, I was down the shore before I came here. Oh, so you hit the Jersey Shore first? Jersey Shore first. Forget about it. Forget about it. So you already said forget about it. We've only been talking yeah. like 20 seconds. That might be 20 more times. It just comes out. Sorry. Forget about it. Forget about it. And finally, Suzanne from California always feels like she's being watched. What are some of the names people call you, Suzanne? I got Suzy Q, Susan Powder, Susan Lucci. You also collect dolls. Mm -hmm. I have about 15. I have Buckwheat, Heidi. I got this little doll that's climbing out my little, my little container thing. I got a little scary doll. I got, I got, I got tons. Does it ever freak you out like you wake up and see the doll? Because all my dolls are in front of my bed. There's like 20 of them. So when you wake up, you see all these dolls just staring at you. And then when you walk around the room, they just follow you going like that. <laughs> She's a little hyper. All right, first off, let's find out who knew it. I asked all three the same question. You guys have to figure out who got it right. You lock in your choice, and a correct guess earns you $100. All right, let's go. Here's the first question I asked to Heather, Kevin, and Suzanne. Name the actress who plays the title character on TV's Ally McBeal. So who do you think knew it up there? Do you think it was Heather, Kevin, or Suzanne could tell me about that one? All right, so lock in your choices. And you guys are both locked in. You both think Heather's the one. Brooke, you think Heather knows? Yeah, she seems a little smarter than the two. So okay, all right. Heather. Adrian, you agree? Heather's the one? Yeah, let's find out. Let's okay. <laughs> all right, let's find out. Name the actress who plays the title character on TV's Ally McBeal. Oh, that scrawny girl. Um, Calista Flackhart. Very good. <laughs> she got it right. Way to go. You, uh, you guys both yeah. have each got $100. Yeah. That's the way we like to start off a show. And, you know, just for fun, I'm thinking, let's check in with my man Kevin here. Name the actress who plays the title character on TV's Ally McBeal. Ain't that Ally McBeal? What do you mean? That's her name, Ally McBeal. Plays, she, she plays herself. What do you herself. think of her? What do you think of the girl of Ally McBeal? Nah, I don't like her too much. She's, too, she's real snatched. Nah, she's too, too thin. She's got to bulk up. <laughs> she's got to bulk up. Throw a burger in her mouth, right. All right, I yeah, love that guy. Yeah. Kevin, you rock. All right, here's the next question I asked all three. First published in 1992, what series of scary kids books was created by R.L. Stein? So who do you think knew that one? What do you think, guys? You guys are off to a good start one for one. And you're both locked in. And let's see, you're going to try Suzanne out this time. Huh, Brooke? You think she knows? Yeah, she's talking about her scary dolls, so maybe she might know oh. about the scary movies. See, you're paying yeah, attention. Let's see if it works for you, Brooke. Good job. First published in 1992, what series of scary kids' books was created by R.L. Stein? It was Goosebumps. Uh, you read the Goosebumps books? No. I saw the little, the little fourth graders used to get them, and I never had interest in Are them. Are you too cool for that? Yeah, I don't read that much. <laughs> she got it right. Way to go, Brooke. Nice research done there. You're paying attention. Adrian, you went with Heather. I don't think she got it, but let's check it out anyway. 
first published in 1992, what series of scary kids books were created by R.L. Stein? Um, is that the Harry Potter thing? Is it the Harry Potter thing? Harry Potter, yeah. What is it? It's that. Goosebumps. Oh. Well, Familiar with the Goosebumps? Um, well, I wasn't allowed to read those as a kid. Oh, why? Um, because they were demonic, oh. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, Edwin. Heather didn't know that one. And just for fun, I want to see what Kevin said. Why not? First published in 1992, what series of scary kids books was created by uh -oh. R.L. Stein? Oh, what's that? Uh, Harry Potter, right? Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Did you read any of those books? No, not one of them. You don't read? What's the last book you read? Any books? The last book I read was, um, I don't know, it was probably like, uh, I think it was Animal Farm. Animal Farm. George, Al George Orwell back in high school. Okay, here's the last question of the round, guys. I asked all three. Stedman Graham is the longtime love interest of what celebrity? So who knew it? Who knew about Stedman Graham? Was it Heather, Kevin, or Suzanne? Stedman Funny TV funhouse cartoon. <laughs> anyway, all right, you're both locked in. You think Heather knows, huh, Brooke? Yeah, she knew about Alan McBeal, so she might be up with that. Up with the pop culture yep. stuff. All right, let's see if it works. Stedman Graham is the longtime love interest of what celebrity? Um, oh, Oprah. It Oprah. is Oprah. She's my girl. Oh, she's worth like a half a billion, and she's been dating this guy for how long? And she hasn't married him. Do you know why? She never will marry him. Why buy the, the cow when you can get the milk free? I'm sorry. That usually works the other way, but. Did I just say that? <laughs> <laughs> Job. All right, it looks like uh, uh, you went with Kevin. He got that one wrong, Adrian. So let's move on here. Go to the break. Adrian, you have 100 bucks though. But Brooke, three for three, $300. Good strategy, too. You know what I love? When the dollar values double next on Street Tonight. What animal is known for having a cry that sounds like maniacal laughter? Hyena. How's it sound? It's like. studio contestants. Now we have Adrian here. Adrian from Los Angeles, California works, uh, you were working at a movie theater. This is pretty cool. Tell the story. Yeah, I used to work at this movie theater right. and after a while there's so many people that kind of look the same. So I'm helping these customers and all these employees and managers, they're rushing over to help me, right? Yeah. I'm like, yo, cool. It turns out I'm helping Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman and I'm the only one who doesn't know it. You didn't know it was them? <laughs> but then oh nobody compared to you, Frank, because you the man, Frank. Uh, Baby, thanks, you the man. Adrian. And I'm actually, uh, I'm actually taller than Tom Cruise. A lot of people know that. It's true. All right, now we have the lovely Brooke here. She's from Bakersfield, California, a cheerleading coach. I noticed going to the break, it's fun. So uh, some of that. And um, tell me your cookie story. Okay, I, was, I bought some cookies at the mall and I sat them on a bench and when I came back, there was a lady eating my cookies. And I, I was really upset and so I ate my cookies. And then when I was leaving, I picked up my sweater and found out that I was eating her cookies the entire time. That's right, that's why you should keep your sweater I on, Brooke. I feel so bad. Right. <laughs> Well, no, because you said they were under the sweater. Yeah. All right, give me, give me spirit fingers. Okay, all right. All right, thanks for being here, you guys. Let's freak out the scores. 100 bucks for Adrian, 300 bucks for Brooke. There's the cheerleader. Oh, Americus. It must be time to find out who blew it to me. Oh, it's the same question, only two at a time. You guys have to figure out who got it wrong. Lock in a choice, and a correct guess earns you $200. Yeah, plus there's a dunce cap in this round. You can only use it once. Now, when you think your opponent won't know the answer to a question, buzz in and dunce them. If they're wrong, you get 200 bucks, but if they're right, they get the 200 bucks. The cap's a backbiter, so be cautious. All right, here's the first question I asked to both Kevin and Suzanne. I asked both of them. A Pomeranian is a very small type of what? What do you think? Who blew it up there? 200 bucks for each correct prediction in this round. Do you think it was Kevin or Suzanne did not know that? And you guys are both locked in. You both think Suzanne. Brooke, you don't think she'll know this? She is one fry short of a Happy Meal. Okay. Right. And what about you, Adrian? You don't think she'll know? Yes, Frank, that's my final answer. Okay. <laughs> a Pomeranian is a very small type of what? Bug. It's a bug? It's a bug. And how do you, what do you do with a Pomeranian? You, um... You, you can't you get, step on them? You step on them and then what? What's the noise it makes? Good. step on a Pomeranian. What noise does it make? It goes crack. Night, 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 night. You both have Suzanne. Way to go. 200 bucks for each of you. Nice job, you guys. And thanks for plugging two other game shows. All right, uh, Kevin actually had the right answer. Here it is. <laughs> a Pomeranian is a very small type of what? Pomer a dog. Small kind of dog, right. What kind of dog do you have? Uh, Lapsopsy. Oh, you do? <laughs> Oh, okay. My father used to have one of them. <laughs> Forget about it. Way to go, Kevin. All right. Here's a question I asked to Heather and Kevin. I asked both of them. Who was the last Democratic U.S. president? 
What do you think? Who blew it? Who was the last Democratic U.S. president? Was it Heather or Kevin blew this one, guys? All right. And you guys both locked in. You both think Heather. Adrian, you don't think she'll know this, huh? Well, I don't think so. I no? Nah. And Brooke, you agree? He's the police. Let's hope he knows something about... Exactly. He should know. All right, let's see if Heather blew it for both of you. Who was the last Democratic U.S. president? Um, um, Clinton. <laughs> and, you, and you look like... Monica Lewinsky. You know, a lot of people say I look like Clinton, you know what I'm saying? Really? Hey. I'm sorry, both of them with Heather. She got that one right. It actually was Kevin who didn't know. Watch this. Who was the last Democratic U.S. president? <sighs> uh, I'll go with, uh, I'll go with Ronald Reagan. <laughs> That's the wrong answer. Reagan was actually a Republican. Correct answer, Bill Clinton. Okay, here's the last question I asked to Heather and to Suzanne. I asked both ladies, in what city did the first real world TV series take place? So what do you think? Who blew this? One of the girls didn't know, Heather or Suzanne. You guys tell me which one, I'll give you 200 bucks. All right, you're both locked in, and you think Heather blew it, huh, Adrian? Yeah, I don't think she watches enough TV. You don't think she no, watches a lot of TV? Know. All right, well, she blew it, you get 200 bucks. Let's check it out. In what city did the first real world TV series take place? Um, I would have to say Los Angeles. You know what? It was New York. Oh, okay. LA like was the New second one. Okay. Then San Francisco, then Seattle, then uh, New Orleans, then Hawaii. She blew it. Way to go, Adrian. Nice job. Heather did not know. You get the 200 bucks, takes you up to 500. It looks like uh, actually uh, Suzanne had the correct answer, which was New York. Let's recap the scores. Adrian, 500 bucks. And we like this book, $500 too. You know, I think he's on my back right now to take a break. But I don't want to. You're going to force me to. We'll be back. In the fairy tale, what was the name of Hansel's sister? Gretel. Hansel and Gretel. And what happened to them at the end? Uh, I think the wolf ate them, right? They got whacked. Yeah, they got whacked by the wolf. <laughs> Want to see a few studs? No problem, because it's time to pick your opponent. Each will choose one person for the entire round and try to guess how to answer three questions. A correct prediction is worth $300, you guys. And the dunce cap is back. It's worth 300 bucks. You can only use it once. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't think we used it last round, did we? Just remember, it's there. All right, we got a tie game. Adrian's got 500 bucks. Brooks got 500 bucks. Picture both tied. Adrian, you won the preliminary tiebreaker backstage. So who would you like to pick? I'm going to go with... Heather, Heather. very good. Brooke, how about you? I'm gonna ride Suzanne. All right, very good, guys. Okay, Adrian, here's the first question to Heather. What two body parts are used in the name of a popular dandruff shampoo? What do you think? Think Heather got that right or wrong? <laughs> she gotta get this right if she don't shampoo her hair. Okay, all right, let's take a look. What two body parts are used in the name of a popular dandruff shampoo? Head and shoulders. What do you know about head and shoulders? You have to use that product? No, I haven't. You have nice shiny hair. Yeah, thanks. Healthy. <laughs> I love her laugh. She got it right, Adrian. Nice job. Yeah. Broke the tie. Takes you up to 800 bucks. All right, Brooke, you can tie it up with your first question to Suzanne. What organization is also known by the acronym PETA? So what do you think? Oh, you've been done, Adrian. Throw that cap up on him, Brooke. All right, I'm going to read the question again, Adrian. You have five seconds to answer it. What organization is also known by the acronym PETA? I have no idea. Two oh. seconds. Uh, That's a tough one. Brooke gets the money. We got a tie yeah. game. All right, good job, Brooke. Now, do you think Suzanne got it right or wrong? Wrong. Think she got it wrong? All right, let's take a look. 300 bucks more. What organization is also known by the acronym PETA? Um, Taco Bell. Taco Bell? Yeah. What is PETA? It's... Fajita PETA. Fajita PETA. What's your favorite PETA? Um, the chicken kind. The chicken kind. Well, you don't want to hurt. You, do, you, do you mind killing animals and all that? Miss... I don't mind as long as I don't see it. <laughs> yeah. She got it wrong. Way to go, Brooke. Another 300 bucks for you on that question. Takes you up to 1100. Nice job. Yeah. Correct answer. Peepical, peepical. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. PETA organization. Yes. Okay. A couple animal lovers. All right, Adrian, here's the next question to Heather. Hugh Hefner created Playboy magazine in the 50s. What similar magazine did Bob Guccione create in the 60s? So what do you think? Think Heather got that right or wrong, Adrian? I think she got this wrong. You think she'll get this one wrong? Yeah. All right, let's take a look, see if we got a tag in. Hugh Hefner created Playboy magazine in the 50s. What similar magazine did Bob Guccione create in the 60s? Um, GQ. GQ. Yeah. And what's that magazine known for? Um, really good looking men. I was in GQ. <laughs> I'm sure that you were. Yeah. That sounded sarcastic. <laughs> She got it wrong. Way to go, Adrian. We got a tag game, $1,100. Um, 
the correct answer, I, penthouse? I've never heard publication, penthouse. Hmm. Oh. Apparently they have some sort of forum I wrote a letter to once. Okay, uh, here's the next question for you, Brooke, to Suzanne. What does the X in XFL stand for? Do you think Suzanne got it right or wrong? You can take the lead again, Brooke. What I do you think, think she got it wrong. You think wrong? She won't know yeah. this one? Mm, she's not that smart. Okay, let's take a look. What does the X in XFL stand for? Extreme. That's your right answer. She actually got it right. Extreme Football League. And of course, it's sadly gone. All right. <laughs> it, it, did you guys see an XFL game? Yeah! <laughs> Five people. That's why it's no longer around. Okay. <laughs> All right, Adrian, let's see here. Your last question of the round uh, for Heather before the wager of death. I showed Heather this card and I asked her, can you use this word correctly in a sentence? So what do you think, Adrian? Do you think she was able to do that? <laughs> she better get this right. You think she got this one right? She better get this right. All right, let's see. Take a look. 300 bucks on the line. Can you use this word correctly in a sentence? Um, Cajun. I like Cajun meats. You do? Yes. What's your Cajun? Actually, I really don't. I don't like spicy food. But you got to say it, say it like they say it down in New Orleans. Cajun. 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 She got it right. Way to go, Adrian. Yeah, I don't know. You're up to 1400 bucks. You take the lead on that one. Oh, that's right. Looks like uh, you, you definitely had some motivation. <laughs> Brooke, you went with Suzanne. This is the last question of the round for her. If you get this, we'll have a tie game for the wager of death. It's been tied pretty much the whole show, so let's, do, let's make it happen. I asked Suzanne, finish this phrase found on many car side view mirrors. Objects in mirror are closer than what? I think she got it right or wrong for a tie broke for the wager of death. She better get this one right. All right, let's take a look. Finish this phrase found on many car side view mirrors. Objects in mirror are closer than what? The blind spot. Closer than the blind spot. Yeah, we had a car accident last year at school. What were you doing, backing up? I side swiped another car. I'm sorry, she got that wrong, Brooke. The correct answer, closer than they appear. Yeah, all right, let's recap the scores. Brooke, $1,100, nice total. But Adrian was hot there, $1,400. When we return, Adrian and Brooke will be making a final prediction on a question I asked to Heather, Kevin, and Suzanne. I asked them, what device sounds to signal the close of trading on the New York Stock Exchange? Hey, we're just a little comedy game show. Sometimes we take it a little further when we impose. The wager of Be silent, be still, we'll come back. Adrian and Brooke, here's the lowdown. During the break, you both secretly chose a person, predicted if they would be right or wrong, and wagered an amount of money not to exceed your total. Now, recapping the scores, uh, let's see. Brooke's got $1,100. Adrian's got $1,400. Feeling panicky? Suffocated? Nervous about your choices? It's terrifying, isn't it? Here's a question I asked to Heather, Su uh, Kevin, and Suzanne. What device sounds to signal the close of trading on the New York Stock Exchange? Let's get your choices, Adrian. You have a $300 lead, so who do you want to see and try to hold on for the victory? I want to see. Going with Suzanne? Yeah. All right. Brooke, how about you? Only trying by 300 bucks? I'm going with Suzanne, too. You also chose Suzanne. All right, nobody chose Heather. Thank you. Very funny. And Kevin out in New York and Jersey. Very funny guy. Thanks. All right, so there's only one clip left in the show, you guys. Close game. A lot of money on the tables. Table? All right, let's see what Suzanne's <laughs> clip is. Suzanne, what device sounds to signal the closing of trading on the New York Stock Exchange? It's a ding, ding, ding sound with a bell. With a bell. Yeah. That is the correct answer. It is a bell. That is the right answer. Now, Brooke, you went with Suzanne. We just saw her get it right. What did you say she would do? You said she would get it... Wrong. All wrong. How much of your 1100 bucks did you wager, Brooke? Hopefully you saved a little something. What'd you do? Wager a thousand. Uh, leaves you with a hundred bucks. You still got something there. Now, Adrian, you also went with Suzanne. We saw her get it right. What did you say she would do? I said she'd get it. You said she'd get oh, it. wrong. All right, Adrian, you had 1400 bucks. If you wagered less than 1300 bucks, you won. How much did you wager? Adrian, you wagered. Oh, the bust you down to zero. Brooke, you won a hundred bucks. Thanks, guys. What did we learn on Street Smarts today? Well, the last Democratic president was Bill Clinton, not Ronald Reagan. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Oh, my God, Brooke. What device sounds to signal the close of trading on the New York Stock Exchange? A horn. The horn? <laughs> what device sounds to signal the close of trading on the New York Stock the Exchange? The, the bell. Right away. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs>